West Africa report called More Than Propaganda, available on our website. And one of the main reasons why we conducted this research was to look more closely into what Boko Haram has been saying in its messages and why. This should help us get a better understanding of the group and ultimately aid in efforts to undermine its influence and its capacity. And in many ways, as we will see, Boko Haram's messaging has displayed a clear convergence between strategy and operations, highlighting the importance of examining this aspect. Now, before we begin, we should just quickly lay out what we mean by Boko Haram messaging. Essentially, this is the public outreach conducted on behalf of the group, which has taken a variety of forms. Now, most jihadist organizations these days conduct frequent messaging to disseminate their narratives, publicize their actions, and promote their vision. And in this sense, Boko Haram is no different. For the purposes of this report, 145 messages were analyzed, which were determined to be from individuals re representing the core faction of Boko Haram, led by Abu Bakr Shakur. These messages span six years from Boko Haram's reemergence in 2010 up until it split into two factions in August 2016. And the 145 messages ranged from a variety of sources, from, from press statements by group spokesmen with journalists, to videos from leader Abu Bakr Shakur, to later forays onto social media. Now, there have been a few key phases in Boko Haram messaging, underlying the main point that this has not been a static enterprise, but one marked by consistent evolution over time. The most obvious change has been better use of technology in the productions themselves. More recent videos, for example, have been of higher quality, including features such as subtitles or better editing of clips. And in this uh, example on the slide, we have an old flyer that was distributed by Boko Haram contrasted with uh, one of their Twitter accounts. But other changes have been significant as well. For example, messaging type has shifted dramatically in favor of videos, ending the practice of press interviews, or the less reported use of flyers as those we see here. Language has also shifted over time, from a near total concentration on Hausa to more and more messaging in Arabic. This has wider implications, especially in terms of intended audience, that we will revisit a bit later in the presentation. And in addition, dissemination has also nearly completely changed since Boko Haram's initial messages. As the group now relies almost exclusively on social media, sites like Twitter, Telegram, and YouTube to disseminate its narrative. One interesting side note here is the increased usage of Telegram by jihadist groups is, is a recent development and one precipitated by the shutdown of many of their accounts on Twitter which uh, demonstrates their ability to switch tactics and respond as need be. So the key underlying point here is that messaging has significantly changed over time. Now, what does that mean? Well, in many ways, messaging is accompanied larger changes in the movement itself. For example, early Chico videos were primarily filmed indoors. You could even hear children crying in the background of songs. This changed in favor of outdoor messaging and uh, was in constant with the group shifting from more of an urban-based movement to a rural focus. As another more obvious example, the imitation of Islamic State messaging in the lead-up to the group's pledge foreshadowed that event. Furthermore, messaging is often linked to strategic goals and operational activity, as we will see shortly. And in addition, the constant evolution demonstrates that while not always in a consistent manner, Boko Haram has ensured its narrative is publicly disseminated. In this sense, the group must see some benefits to its messaging, such as creating awareness about its activities, efforts which could also tie into recruitment. 
Now moving on to look at the content of the messages themselves, which was the main focus of this study, we see that a number of key themes surface throughout historic Boko Haram messaging. The top two resurfacing themes are, first, messaging in order to claim an attack, which has occurred in 50% of all productions. And secondly, messaging that provides additional warnings or threats. So claiming past violence and warning of future violence. These have been the two most popular reasons to conduct a message. And in fact, many campaigns of violence initiated by Boko Haram, such as attacks on schools, cell phones, and even the media, were preceded by public warnings in its messaging. For example, in January 2012, prior to a campaign burning down school classrooms, Boko Haram spokesman Abu Kaka complained about security forces targeting Islamic schools and warned that if this continues, quote, you have primary schools as well, and we will start bombing them, end quote. Perhaps in an even more famous example, prior to the well-known abduction of 219 schoolgirls from the town of Chibok on 14 April 2014, Chico said in a video three weeks earlier that, quote, university is forbidden. Girls, you should return to your homes in Islam, it is allowed to take infidel women as slaves, and in due course, we will start taking women away and sell them in the market. So a rather unsettling statement, typical of Chicot's style, but one which was followed up by action a few weeks later. This same foreshadowing element can be seen in terms of the group's geographic expansion, as unheeded warnings within Nigeria to Sokoto and Kano State uh, to release its members or uh, in detention or face attacks resulted in the first major incidences of violence shortly thereafter. A similar pattern occurred in northern Cameroon as well. Now the frequency of both these themes, claiming attacks and warning of future ones, suggests that messaging is closely linked to operational activity. The third most common theme that we found in Boko Haram messaging across this study. And that dealt with negotiations with the Nigerian government, with the group frequently denying rumors that had surfaced in Nigerian press regarding dialogue. Now the fact that Boko Haram has been, that this has been such a prominent theme demonstrates how strongly Boko Haram has felt compelled to counter various narratives in the local press and ensure the dominance of its own narrative over those of others. This has been evident elsewhere as well. For example, with Chico's frequent resurfacing shortly after rumors that he's been killed and an opportunity for the group to dispute commentary from the Nigerian government. Certain other themes have risen and declined over time, demonstrating a clear convergence between messaging, strategy, and operations. One good example of this deals with the group's pres presentation early on of itself as the defender of Nigerian Muslims against Christians and the Nigerian government. For example, this theme surfaced in one-fifth of messaging in 2012, around the time Boko Haram was actively looking to expand its presence in central Nigeria and frequently launching attacks on Christian churches in the area. By 2015 though, this theme completely declined from messaging. Now that's not to say that Boko Haram has dropped its anti-Christian sentiments in any, any fashion, but rather that it stopped broadcasting them as much as before. And there's a lot of reasons for this and the paper goes into a bit more detail, but generally it was connected to a greater shift in Boko Haram's strategic outlook reinforcing the idea that messaging is closely linked to and essentially a byproduct of the group's strategic calculus. Now, one other theme I'll mention here, as I think it's important in the context of the movement split into two factions, is that of civilian targeting. This is frequently surfaced in Boko Haram messaging, recurring in 12% of all content. 
Now, this has likely been a reoccurring theme, given the public relations battle that Boko Haram has waged on this front. Boko Haram has been clear since the beginning of it that its ideological stance relates that simply claiming yourself as a Muslim is not good enough to, to uh, exempt yourself from Boko Haram targeting. Rather, you must demonstrate your adherence to Boko Haram's vision through your actions in order to secure your innocence. Nonetheless, this view has been narrowly applied over time in reaction to external developments. Now, this has been a difficult stance to explain to in a public manner, uh, in, in a manner they would understand and accept, leading to the need to constantly revisit this issue of civilian targeting throughout the years. In this sense, it also goes to show that not all Boko Haram messaging has been affected by any means, nor had the likely desired impact. Moving on from some of the content themes, one other important question to examine surrounds who is Boko Haram trying to target in these messages. This is important to, to look at as it gives an indication as to the group's orientation and where it might be headed in the future. In reality, if messaging is also tied to recruitment, it should provide a window into who the group is targeting in this regard as well. Now, language usage reveals important clues as to likely intended audience. As mentioned before, initial messages were primarily conducted in Hausa, ensuring a local or at best regional audience. Interesting to note here though, is that much of the initial support of the movement came from the Kanuri ethnic group, but public messaging was rarely conducted in this language. Some internal Boko Haram videos that have been recovered, however, show the militants in their day-to-day -day interactions speaking in Kanuri often. In this sense, the decision to broadcast messaging in Hausa, which is at wider range as a lingua franca, was likely a strategic one to reach this more expanded audience and go beyond its initial support base. Over time, messaging slowly began to incorporate more Arabic as well. For example, while just one message was primarily conducted in Arabic in 2012, by 2015, 90% of messaging contained Arabic speech, though often in concert with Hausa and English. In this sense, the increased use of Arabic clearly demonstrates an intended audience outside the Lake Chad Basin region and is one of the clearest indications that Boko Haram increasingly sought to position itself amongst global jihadist movements. Nonetheless, given that messaging is often tied into recruitment and the lack of Arabic speaking foreign fighters that have flown into the Lake Chad Basin region in large numbers, the effectiveness of this uh, reaching out uh, on these audiences can be questioned. In addition, Hausa retains a significant role in Boko Haram messaging, indicating continued local importance as well. Before concluding, I should mention the ISS report also lists a few recommendations for further action. And perhaps the most important one is the need for further research on this topic, especially into the potential linkages between messaging and recruitment into the movement. A better understanding of this resonance of messaging and its, its role as a recruitment tool will ultimately enable more directed and effective programs to reduce this influence.